All right, Florida Panther fans, hockey fans, Leaf fans that might be watching this preview. Welcome to one of multiple Panthers, Leafs series previews. We have special guest today, Billy Lindsay, Mr. Hockey himself. Mr. Panther. Mr. Well, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I've been misspeaking all day. I did my series preview. I had to put in subtitles. I called the Leafs the lightning a couple of times. So don't trust anything I have to say today. <laughs> well, Leafs lightning, they wear the same colors. So yeah, and it starts with L. So I get I get a yeah. I get a I get a break there. So Billy, first thing right out the box. You got we we just we just want to know how that felt for you. And I know Stu has a specific question, so I'll let him back end it, but just express the feeling of what happened the other night against Boston. And then Stu, if you want to ask your specific part of that. Yeah. Yeah, for for myself, it's phenomenal. Uh just waiting uh all the time and to, to scrape and claw like we did to get in the playoffs and just get in basically on game number 82. And this team just kept grinding and fighting and somehow found, found a way to get in the playoffs. And then you go up against this historically great team in Boston and you find yourselves down three to one in the series. You lose a couple of games at home and somehow you come back and win that uh, game seven. There's nothing better as an athlete to participate in a game seven and to have it go your way in overtime uh, game seven, you do feel nerves. You could see it on the Boston side, especially, but it's one, one game as I felt as an athlete that the, the butterflies crept up. Uh, there was a real strong nervous energy and watching it as a fan and someone that works for the team and uh, being on the outside and not being able to control it, it's it's far worse. It's far, <laughs> far worse. <laughs> uh, pacing back and forth, uh, just uh, going through just going through the motions, doing everything, trying to watch this game. It is it's so it's uh, so unbelievably stressful. <laughs> uh, just living and dying. But when it goes your way at the end, it's uh, it's exhilaration. Uh, just. Not it's not quite the same, but it's close to what I felt when I was playing. It's just to do and, that and to do it against Boston, call, crawl out of that three to one, and this this team just never quits. It just never never gives up, and found a way. You get the six on five goal, and uh, Verhege. How clutch is Verhege? Uh, going oh, back man. to last year, it's uh, yeah. It reminds got, me of some other guy that used to score clutch goals uh, in the playoffs against he, the Bruins. Yeah, he's got, but he's done it a couple <laughs> times. Did it last year against Washington. Does it this year? He's got a clutch gene. So, uh, but the 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 way too is that you got to you got to also put it in perspective. It's if you want to win a Stanley Cup, it's just one round. If you were comparing it to last year, you're in the same situation. It just yeah. sort of it just sort of has a different feel about it because. Last year, you were the team that was being hunted. Now you're the team trying to hunt everyone down from yeah. from behind. So there's a there's a different vibe to it. But if you lose in the second round, you lose in the second round. It's still the the same end result right. as the year before. Which what you're hoping for is the East is kind of wide. What you're hoping for is to to get the ultimate prize, and you put yourself in pretty good shape. Yep. Go ahead, Stu. So that kind of touches yeah. upon and segues into my question because you're the only one that could give us like what it was like in 96 because that team faced the Bruins, obviously Eric Lindros and the Flyers, but then you played the Penguins where you had Lemieux and Yager who had like record years. It goes to game seven. Tell the fans what it's like. You win the game, you're, you're away, obviously, so you're not celebrating with the home crowd. But what's it like when you get in the locker room and then, you know, the press comes in and whatnot, and, and, then, they, and then they close the doors and it's just you guys? What's it like to win a game like that? It's euphoria. It's uh, especially when, you, when it's a trip to the Stanley Cup. It's you dream of stuff as a, as a kid, as a hockey player, to, to get into, into the NHL and then. The other, once you get into the NHL, the other part of it is staying in the NHL. And once you become a regular in the NHL, you you you, you only have one goal and one mind. And I never did it, but 
uh, you you want to win a Stanley Cup. So to to the, that is you're just on a I can I can re, of all the games that game seven in Pittsburgh uh, I I can remember vividly just warm up the sweat dripping off me all the emotions that I felt it's it's a game that just kind of you you remember every every little play uh, every little instance and it's the opportunity of, of a lifetime to go out there and. Uh, uh, do what you've always dreamed of. Uh, so I guess the real answer to the question is: is it's why you play the game. That's yep. that is the essence of the game. It, since you're a boyhood boyhood child, and someone has to lose, someone has to win. But if you're Verhage and you score the goal, or if you're us and you go into Pittsburgh and win game, game seven, it's those are stuff that you dream of on the when you're playing on the practice rinks growing up is being that yeah. hero and. Uh, that's what it's that's that's what it is all about so the first question as we move on towards toronto and this is it, it can it can be you know interpreted to be about this series at all but it's the playoffs in general when something like what happened in overtime the other night where pasta gets that shot and bob doesn't really i don't even know if he saw it he didn't move and it goes off of his knob and a hundred times the puck's going in the back of the net, but this time it doesn't. <laughs> Did, on the ice in that moment, do you guys recognize that? Oh, we we just caught it. Like, do you recognize that you just caught a huge break? And is is that is that a fluid thing during the game, or is you not realizing that till like after the game? Like, wow, we we caught a lucky break there. Uh, you 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 know what's happened, but it's the saves. It's you, there's plays. There could be scrums around the goal line where someone comes in and just taps it off the goal line. He just moved forward. It's right. Okay, we got the save. Uh, now just onto the onto the next moment. It doesn't matter as long as the puck stays out of the net. You don't care. <laughs> right, 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 right. right. Lucky break. Uh, right. Uh, so you just kind of focus on the on the next shift and uh, take that. The Panthers did a really good job for the most part in overtime dictating the pace of play uh they were the more aggressive team and because of that ended up with that goal by you you're you're aware of yeah that's it, you know one inch this way or one inch the other way right. it could end up for a goal for Boshanek but uh that's that's hockey I think the yeah. I think the Bruins were nervous for most of that game and in the overtime I, they were just playing not to lose in my opinion well so, it's, yeah if what you is your at, what is your assessment now? We don't we didn't have a, a usually you would think we'd get a couple of days to decompress, but we're going right into game one here tonight. What do we need to do to win game one? Yeah, well, just back to that Boston series. Uh, Boston, if, I, w- I wouldn't re- use the word choke, but they they <laughs> that game seven for veteran players, the mishandling of the puck and. Uh, the mistakes that were made during the course of the series, the turnovers, the Panthers won the series, but Boston in large part beat themselves to some degree with some horrendous turnovers, which just was not a characteristic. And uh, that's so the Panthers forced them into those turnovers, took advantage of it. And that's what happened. You, you watched the Devils play the way they came out against the Rangers in that game last night. That's how yeah. a home team comes out. And that's what I was kind of expecting out of Boston. I, they were the Devils are just flying all over the ice, right? And so, but anyway, you get back into it and this series. And what you're going to have to find out, this is one of the greatest challenges in sports, is to move on from a, a series like that, where you're the underdog and found a way through it, and ramp it back up and go back. If you're not careful, what it's exactly. We flew to engage after we beat Pittsburgh. We flew straight to Colorado and had the same sort of scenario, and one day off. And if you don't find a dislike or distaste for your opponent at, right off the bat, and find that urgency into the game, and you just kind of feel it out, you could be, be down two nothing and before and before you even know what hit you. Right. It's uh, you have to realize even though you have to put all that stuff behind you and just kind of carry it over and play with that same sort of mentality. And that's, that is really, really tough to do because you had 
Montour out there gra- gasping for air and all these guys <laughs> just sucking air and just trying to get healthy and get – and two days later, you're dropping a puck in a different series. And right. Can you can you rev that engine back up and full throttle? And I don't care what you say, Boston, as good as their series was, when you move on these series, all these teams – are gonna be they're moving on they're getting better and better as well this uh yeah. this toronto team is no joke uh <laughs> they've they made some additions at the deadline this this is going to be e- just as equally or if not a tougher series for the panthers than it was against boston yeah um all year long i was saying we're not afraid of boston not afraid of boston because the way we had played against them now the four games we played against toronto we had the one game where they beat us bad six to two, but the other three all went to overtime. Two of them went their way. One of them went ours. So the importance of every single moment on that ice is, is going to make a, is going to make a big, huge difference. How can the Panthers play their game? You, you, you know, that they're going to get those, you know, they're going to take penalties. I mean, we, we, we've been sitting here screaming all year. It, it, they're going to be in the box. What do they need to do specifically against this team to even just get the penalty kill, just just get it a little bit better because it wasn't good against the Bruins. The Bruins almost single-handedly beat us with, with power play goals. So what do we need to do against the Leafs to just get a little bit better at the at the PK? Yeah, it's, uh, penalty killing just comes down to, to blocking shots, getting getting in lanes and trying to, to f- force those turnovers. And everyone has to read and react to kind of be on the same page. Boston had a really good power play. This power play in Toronto is even better uh, with their groupings and they're able to run. So you have to you you have to get your goaltender is going to have to be your goal, best penalty killer in some, some instances. I killed a, a lot of penalties, and especially in the playoffs – it's you see teams now with the pressure orientation uh, the first first minute of the power play if you can kind of dis, disrupt their entries the panthers have to be better at taking away entries into the zone right. if they the clean setups kind of really hurt you so the if they, once they get it down the ice if they can deny some clean entries that 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 would help them out immensely and then once toronto gets set up in the offensive zone you just have to the first minute of the power play, or if you're on there for the first 20 seconds until you get a line shift, uh, you can be very aggressive on any bobble puck and just kind of attack all over the place. But if you get stuck out there for 30 seconds and you're still on the ice, then that is when you have to you have to be able to collapse down into a box because you're tired. Right. And that all be that all becomes predicated on getting sticks in lanes and having willingness. Uh, to block shots. It uh, depends how much you get hemmed into your ice, but typically if you get onto it, you get 20 seconds on the ice, you get the new guys 20 seconds on the ice, 20. You watch Carolina, they're the best at it, at killing penalties, and it's, sometimes they'll have their defensemen up high, their forward down low, but everyone's on the same page as far as reading and reaction. There can't be any kind of hesitation as a penalty killer. If you're gonna go go and everyone that reacts off that, you're gonna have to to, to react. I see the Panthers sometimes getting caught in between on their yeah. reads. There's uh, one guy goes and maybe a bit of a hesitation. It's that hesitation uh, against a quick puck moving team is gonna hurt you. So just a little bit more aggressiveness and being on the same page and denying entries is gonna help on the on the penalty kill. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Um, the the line changes. I want to get your opinion here and and just kind of take us through the lineup and and give us your thoughts on some of the Panther players. I I never thought of it all all year long. You know, we're I'm, I do a podcast every day. I'm always rolling the lines in my head of what we could do, but I never once put in my head Cousins with Bennett at Kachuk. And now I never want to see it go away. <laughs> so yeah. Just kind of give us your thoughts on some of the individual players and how they're playing and, and what what you think guys may need to do a little bit better, et cetera. Yeah, well, Kachuk, everything has been said about him. He drags everyone into the, into the fight, and the way that he plays the game is he's a unicorn in the NHL. There's nothing like it. You just got to continue like like that. And 
and I talked about the energy. That's uh, this first game against Toronto for dislike. Uh, if there was any scrums around the net, if I was the Panthers, I'm getting involved early in in these scrums. I'm starting to not go over the edge, but I'm putting my glove in someone's face like Kachuk, uh, uh, trying to disrupt the play, trying to trying to really get get your edge back. And no one does it better better than Kachuk. Bennett too is made for playoff hockey. Cousins is a guy that. Uh, can kind of fit, fit, fill up and down your lineup and grateful for a chance like that. Really smart hockey player. So you put him with two guys and he's a guy that, that, that can grind and he's played well. Uh, it, now it gets beyond that. What you did see in game six and, and game seven that you didn't see throughout the, the most of the series is Barkov got a little better, not, not a ton, but it was the goal in game six was, and it's starting to, to get in the right direction. Barkov's going to have to go to another level. Uh, Lundell started to really pr- play great those last couple of games. Declare was more noticeable. Uh, Declare, Lou Osterina, uh was was much better. So you have to be able to get that the secondary. The sec- the, it wasn't there really at the start of the series. But as it went on, you started to see the second, third, fourth lines have more of an impact. Right. And that's critical because we're, we're, what Toronto did at the deadline with O'Reilly and Achari coming in and bringing in this Matthew Nyes kid up from the University of Minnesota, when you go up and down their lineup, they're four lines deep. And they're, they're, that fourth line for Toronto is going to play around 10, 10, 9, 10, 11 minutes. And that brings their top guys around that 20, 21 minute mark. And for the Panthers, uh, for that fourth line, whoever does end up down there, uh, Stall, Stall, White, those those type of players, you have to get. They don't always have to score, but they're going to have to be effective in games where you don't shorten the bench. And you saw how important leads were in that last series. Yeah. After going through a grueling series like that, leads are going to be important again because the more the Panthers have to shorten their bench. And go down to three lines and play Forsling, Montour, Ekblad, big minutes. If you end up going their four lines against your three lines and you're chasing the game, yeah. that is just, it's going to wear, wear you down uh, over the course. So, so the Panthers have to have, just hang around the ability there. And the fourth line is going to have to have, you have to have, you're going to have to play four lines to some extent. Uh I just, I, you can't, and you can't win playoff series. You saw what happened to Colorado. You just can't win playoff series uh, with a shortened bench. Right. Uh, as teams are teams are too deep at this, this point, and uh, that's that's going to be the big challenge for the Panthers in this series. Is it, it might be a little bit more goal scoring in it, but uh, the contributions through up and down throughout the lineup at this time of the year is is the only way to get it done it was better we saw a little bit more of it that ha- that definitely definitely has to continue against toronto thanks Stu. yeah i agree and i agree we we have to do what we did against the bruins just that aggressive forecheck and and, yeah. and, look, and look for the leafs to cough it up because they will yeah, that's one area where the Panthers do have an advantage is uh, you look at the, the defenseman on the other side, and the same thing that happened with Boston is uh, you got Morgan Riley that, that can really move the puck, but you get beyond Morgan Riley, they're, they're puck moving. It's not a real good puck moving defense core on the other side. And sometimes they go 11, they've been going 11 and 7, 11 forwards, 7 defensemen. Yeah. Uh, kind of roll out on that other side. But what really caused Boston problems was their inability for their defensemen to move the puck and get it out of their zone. And the wingers didn't win b- battles on the boards because the Panthers' defense pinched. And that was what that's the identity Paul Maurice wanted to get to change from that speed game into this heavy forechecking style. It took a while, but this, the Panther team ha- has an identity, and that, that's it. Heavy on the forecheck, create turnovers. Your D are going to pinch aggressively uh, down the wall and see if the other team can handle it. So pay attention to that. If the Panthers can establish a forecheck, spend time down in Toronto's end. Uh, that's going to be the rest. That is going to be their only recipe for success. Yep. So um, in terms of the goaltending, just 
in your experience, and this is this is simply because you probably would remember, obviously, more than me. Um, it's it's rare that you see what the Panthers did, which is go with the hot goalie, and they re, they they replaced them. They eventually moved back to Bob, but it wasn't really because of poor play or because we were out of the series or anything. So, how important of that is it that we basically got two guys at this moment that we could? You got to throw in, you know, if we had to throw Alex Lyon in there, there's, there's no lack, you know, we're not going to lose our confidence. Yeah. What Alex Lyon did was really, really special and credit to the kid. Uh, been in the minor leagues and he actually, from his first call up to the second time when he won all those games down the stretch, he really, you could see the improvement right before your eyes. He was oh, yeah. working with the goaltending coach, Rob Callis, and you could, he, he's athletic. He's got that athletic style. He's kind of like a road hockey goalie. But when he first got called up, he was all over the net, just kind of <laughs> swimming in there. Once he got a little bit of work done, you could see he was much more positionally sound, not not as much wasted movement. And then you, the athleticism to recover, make saves. So that's that's where Alex Lyon uh, was able, able to do and get in the playoffs. But you, why you went back to Bobrovsky and why it was important to get Bobrovsky in a game is Alex Lyon was getting into the 10, 11 straight starts in a row. Right. That's uncharted territory, even even for an NHL goalie. Right. You know, Allmark uh, never played six games in a row was his most in his NHL career on the other side. For, uh, so you're asking a minor league goaltender for the most part, who's never played a lot in the NHL in the most pressure packed <laughs> situation night after night after night, uh, that becomes uh, you, you just wonder is at a certain point is, is when's, when's too much going to be too much. And that's why you had to get Bobrovsky in there. And uh, it was Bobrovsky at his best does have a higher ceiling yeah. than Alex Lyon when, when he's on his game. And he saw that uh, especially in, in game number five, he was off the charts when he stopped 44, 47, did Bobrovsky. Uh, that was such an uh, important game. So we'll see. But, yeah, there's confidence in both goaltenders, and uh, it's been a good story in net for both of them, I think, uh, for Alex Lyon and Sergei Bobrovsky. And the, if anything goes wrong, there will be no hesitation uh, from Bobrovsky back to Lyon. Do you think, um, to couple on what you just said, do you think at any point, like if we get into – However many two, you know, many games that Bob has started straight, you think he'd hesitate to go back to a lion or Bob's more experienced than if he has to do, you know, 10, 15, however many games we have left to win the cup that that we just roll with him straight on through. Yeah, you're in a pretty good situation with Bobrovsky that way as long as he's playing decent uh, because he had the three weeks off. Um, right. So you got a blow that you normally wouldn't get as far as rest. Uh, yeah. He's a goaltender that's used to, to to a heavy workload, and most goaltenders, it, historically, if you go back to and, and win the Stanley Cup, it's one guy that holds the net for the majority. There's been cases last year in Colorado where they used a couple goaltenders, and right, uh, it's gotten more. But with Sergey Bobrovsky uh, and what's happened uh, with having those two three weeks off, it's the situation where he's fa- fairly rested and. Yeah. So I think it's his it's his net, and it's his net. They'll keep him in there unless something, right, disaster and it blows up. Then then you turn back to line. But for the right. most part, they and to me, if you if you really do want a chance to win, uh, Sergey Bobrovsky, no discredit to Alex Line, but Sergey Bobrovsky at his best does give you your best chance to win. So uh, one question that I know um, Stu will agree with, and all Panther fans would agree with, and it's half sarcastic, but half serious. Is there any way and um, that we could file an appeal with the league that if we get to overtime, that John Tavares may not play? <laughs> wow, yeah. it's been a uh, uh, there's a history there, isn't there? Yep. Yes. Yeah. John Tavares has not been kind to the Panthers in playoff hockey. No. So. <laughs> well, he did it to the, he did it to the Lightning. Right. Yeah. So the second part to that is what do we got to do? Why, <laughs> how do we, how do we stop that from happening again? Cause I don't know how many of the fan base can survive another one of those. Yeah. It's going to be, going to be a wild series just uh, with Tavares. You're going to have to, 
that's uh, you got the two top lines. Uh, they've got uh, Matthews Marners that night. Kid, pl- nice kid, plays on that top line actually with Matthew Marners at the moment and Nylander, Tavares, uh, Yank Roke, whoever it is on that side. Uh, what's so it's uh, that's pretty bad. I was talking about that attack and with the addition of O'Reilly, uh, that's kind of where it really balances out. With you can move Riley up uh, to that second wing if if you maybe need some more offense, but they really do have a, a certified checking line there with O'Reilly and Ochari, Achari. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, Neen- Neenlanders is always a threat. Yeah. So it's, uh, uh, yeah. And some of their fourth line guys are, are very capable, good line, good skaters. Uh, this team, uh, this team's going to, the Toronto, Toronto's going to challenge, challenge every aspect. And yeah. it, uh, the goaltending too, Samson off and, and Bobrovsky, it's, there's there's question marks surrounding both of them. Uh, yeah, yeah. Both, so both guys uh, can either look like all world or when they're bad, it's bad. <laughs> yeah, so that's the that's the big uh, always going into a series, uh, the goaltending. We'll see what happens tonight with Samson off and Bobrovsky, but that's been uh, kind of the what's really hurt the Leafs, and <laughs> they've been trying to fix for years and years and years. <laughs> Why they couldn't get past the first round? A large part of it was Bobrovsky and Samsonov was yeah was decent in that in that first round, and so was Bobrovsky. But uh, we'll see in this second series. Uh, goaltending is always so important to to who wins and who loses. So pay play pay close attention to the goaltending duel. Yep. So here's yep. my last question, yeah. Billy. And then, yep. Aside from the usual cast of characters, Kachuk and Bar- who's the one guy on the Panthers? that doesn't get a lot of fanfare that you're looking to, to maybe step it up and, you know, listen, I'm biased. Obviously you were a player like that, that, that stepped up at a, I'm not going to say out of nowhere, but you were 24 years old back then, you know, (laughs) Dave Lowry is another guy that stepped it up in the playoffs. There's always a guy that, that might have like a regular, you know, just an average regular season, and this elevates his game when the playoffs start. So in this particular series, who are you looking for to step it up and maybe pop a couple of goals in or just, you know, surprise us? One of the guy that's uh, really underrated and uh, doesn't – Lou Serena. Uh, people don't appreciate how good he is at both ends of the rink, and – He's, he's, you see him off the ice. I've actually met him. Uh, he's big. He, he, he's big and well built, built, well put together. He, he's a, he's solid. And he had that big goal against Boston, uh, game number six. They ended up being the game winner. But he has, he, he's, to me, he's going to be kind of that X factor, uh, going up against other lines. And Lundell playing better the last couple of games. I look, Luo Sterinen, Lundell, Couple of couple of guys. Those are are two guys that could make differences in this series if they play their best hockey. And uh, the one guy I'm always interested in on the back end is that skates so well. And I don't know if he gets enough credit. And I always tell people to watch him. Is Gustav Forsling? Is uh, you watch him play every single night? It's it goes beyond the skating. And kind of he for a smaller guy he take so much he's willing to take so much punishment as far as blocking shots and yep. doing crazy kind of, i just kind of blows my mind sometimes that uh, some of the stuff that 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 he does he is he's he's gutsy uh he's uh, for a guy that kind of shows skill there it goes way beyond the the skating for him uh he's re- he's got kind of that internal heart and those are guys you need in the playoffs yep so last thing for me what what can the Panthers do differently or do at all that Tampa didn't do in that series? What, what can we do? Cause obviously Tampa, you know, big, 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 tall task and Toronto took them out. So I'm just curious, what can we do better or do that? They didn't do at all. That might flip things our way. Well, you're going to have to, well, Tampa had the big leads. They're going on. I, 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 was at the NHL network and honestly Vasilevsky cost him that series. It, I hate to say that, but the goaltending when they were up four one and end up losing that overtime game and the overtime game before that, 
Uh, goaltending wasn't good. There were some turnovers by Tampa Bay, too, by some of their star players. Kucherov, I didn't feel, but five on five was – he was kind of dreadful in that series uh, <laughs> uh, to do that. What you have to do different is – uh, you're going to have to be able – your top guys are going to have to be good. Your goaltender is is going to have to be able to, to – if you get those leads, Sergei Bobrovsky is going to have to make the saves. And right. you can't let Marner and uh, Marner and Matthews really were, were a lot better than Braden Point and Kucherov and Stamkos and uh, even Tavares and O'Reilly had a huge impact in that series. It's uh, their best players on Toronto – we're just better than the better best players on the right. Tampa Bay side of it. Uh, there, that was always the knock too on Marner and Matthews is could they get it done when it mattered most? Well, they did in that right. opening round series, their top players were far superior uh, to what Tampa Bay offered and their goaltender, their goaltending was better. Yeah. Uh, Vasilevsky was for one of the best. I hate to knock Vasilevsky because he's one of the game's greatest goaltenders, but he was he was awful. First four was, games, he was awful. Yeah. So it's uh, he was human. Yeah, yeah he was. Human. So <laughs> those, those are the, those are the things that, that you got to change. Is your 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 star players and your under play, you got you you have to be better than Matthews, Marner, and 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 that and that crew because if you're not, then Toronto's right. going to have a huge huge advantage in this series. Gotcha. All right, Billy. Really, really appreciate you taking time out of your day. I know you're a busy guy, and all the fans really, really appreciate. Here in your very, very, you've got the best takes in the business, my friend. All right. We love asking you questions because it it it, it takes a special guy to come up with ideas that Stu and I didn't already know, and we always learn from you. So that's <laughs> that's always fun. Well, I'm always glad to be on it, man. Like, man, I can't wait for tonight and get rolling again. Oh Here man, you ain't you're not kidding. Yeah, and last thing you were talking about your nerves. The, you know, we live stream during the games and then I go do the recaps and the intermissions and I had to calm myself down. Like literally the whole first period, my chest was all tight. I had all this pain under here. I mean, I was legit going to stroke myself out. I had to calm myself down. Yeah, B Billy, Eric went into convulsions when we when we tied it. <laughs> And then when we won it, he was just, you had you had to see it. Well, we'll yeah. I'll send yeah. you the clip. Yeah, yeah. It was like 30, 30 seconds of mayhem. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All those games, that even that game six, it went back and forth. Uh, that that almost destroyed me. Oh yeah, I was actually oh. calling the game, and it's going shorthanded right. goal. They're up, and then we score. I'm just like, what the heck is happening out here? Just... <laughs> yep, yep. All right, buddy. All right, Bill, Enjoy thanks, the rest man. of your day. Always Go appreciate Panthers. you coming on. Yep. All yep. right. Enjoy the games, guys. All right. You too. Yep. All the best.